you are tuning in to the Goldilocks Productions presentation of the Angels and Healing Light Show. Sit back, relax, and be open to receive the angelic messages and healing channel through your host, Laura Romero. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm so glad that you're with us today. This is Laura Romero with Angels and Healing Light. This is your show, the show that brings you insight, information, and healing, and ways to connect with your angels, with beautiful divine beings that help make our lives easier, happier, and healthier. I am so happy today to be joining with a very dear friend of mine, a very talented healer, a very intelligent woman who is so multifaceted, no pun intended, but she truly is multifaceted, multi-talented, a very compassionate woman. Welcome to the show, Wendy Shearer. Hi, Wendy. Hey, Laura. How's it going? Good morning. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for being here today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Wendy, Wendy is really, like I said, she's a very multi-talented healer. Uh, she's been involved in many forms of natural healing for the past 28 years. She is a certified Reiki master practitioner, and I can attest to uh, her healing skills. She's really wonderful. She uses crystals and essential oils in her practice. She's been certified in medical Reiki as well. Uh, I have been part of Wendy's teaching skills. Uh, she's recently started teaching crystal classes that teach you how to choose, energize, and work with your stones. And she's also very passionate helping you to understand the importance of bringing essential oils into your life. And there's a lot really to talk about when you think about crystals and choosing them, how to incorporate them in your life. Sure, they look beautiful. Um, There's so many beautiful colors and shapes and types, and and it's really a science, and it really takes a lot of knowledge to be very effective working with them. So that's why that's Wendy to join us today. She has taught many people and helped many people heal using crystals. And so I would love to have you share your insight and information with our listeners, Wendy. Uh, And ladies and gentlemen, I'll be taking your calls too if you have questions for Wendy or if you just like a a question answered with a reading, just give us a call. And don't forget to raise your hand or let, uh, there's a button on there you have to press that says to speak with the host. Press number one, I think it is. But I look forward to talking to you all. So good morning, Wendy, and tell us, you know, I know that you, I know that you really have an affinity with crystals, but how did you get interested in using them? What, okay, so this can be kind of a, um, a story most people have when you're little, you know, you're going out and you're walking around and you see something on the ground and it's sparkly and you pick it up or you see a neat color or a shape. And as a child, you kind of are drawn to the stones and the rocks that are around you. And I was naturally one of those small children. I would pick up anything that was interesting to me. I didn't get out of control with it, but, you know, I had my share of little stones, pebbles that I was picking up through my wandering around the yard. And I think it was probably around uh, the age of 19, I was invited over to a healer's house, and I had walked into his living room, He had no furniture, and the entire room was full of nothing but crystals. Uh, I I have to say, I was totally fascinated. And uh, so I ended up walking around, and I was looking at all of them. And my mom had gone with me, so she was actually talking to him um, in the corner. And I had found this enormous crystal quartz uh, cluster. And I was just looking at it and I was amazed at all the points that were coming out of it. And uh, he had come up to me and he said, would you like to have that? And it's like, well, of course I'd like to have that, but you know, you don't just take this ginormous crystal. Somebody doesn't just give you one of these things. And then he said, oh no, that's, that's fine. He said, this crystal isn't mine. He says, every time I pick it up, it cuts me. 
And so I start pleading. I'm not the one that's supposed to own this crystal, but you're obviously drawn to it. You should have this crystal. And at the time, I didn't quite understand that. I was totally grateful that I got this beautiful crystal. And I think that's when that door cracked open. And all of a sudden, I was just fascinated with everything about crystals, with the energy, with the power, with the healing um, side of things. I mean, it was just, there was so much to take in. And I was so honored that I was able to take this crystal home with me um, that I started looking into more of what the crystals would do. And we ended up uh, going to um, Colorado. We were living in California at the time. And crystals start just showing up for you. It's kind of an amazing thing. So right after we moved in to the place that we were going to be staying at for the first year, I walked outside the door, and there on the front porch was a beautiful pink quartz just sitting there. Someone had left us this amazing gift full of love and welcoming us into our new home. Um, uh, you know, there are moments that just kind of bring tears to your eyes that someone would have been that thoughtful. And I actually mm-hmm. ended up moving that uh, crystal on to a friend when they got married to pass along the love. So that was really interesting. Oh, that's but beautiful. Think- that's a very, uh, very heartfelt gift to receive and to give. And it's oh, how, you, you know, I know you mentioned that sometimes crystals choose you. And those obviously are two cases where, well, those are three cases actually where a crystal chooses you, its owner to yes. work with, whether for a long time or a short time. Um, what, so when you, when, let's say you want to go and choose a crystal, what are the things that you look for when you pick one out, Wendy? Mm, Well, first, there's nothing more exciting than going into a crystal store because there's just so many choices. And I'm really lucky to live in an area that has a lot of places where you can look for your crystals. Um, Kind of when you walk in the door of a new place, kind of get that feeling of the area of the store where you're being drawn to. And that kind of gives you a beginning spot. So there's something there that's calling to you. And when you get over there and you start looking around, you're going to actually see crystals uh, that catch your eye. And it's not even so much of sometimes it's the color, sometimes there's a sparkle, sometimes it's just like there, or you'll keep going back to it. You'll walk around and you keep going back to that same spot. So you feel drawn and to so, it. Yes, they they kind of talk to you you just don't realize it you know they're calling you to come over and take a look and to give them a feel and so when I find one of those and I'm looking through it usually the first crystal I see and notice notice I'll hold that one in my hand and when you're trying to feel the energy of your crystal you want to always use your left hand that's your feminine side that's your receiving hand so put your crystal there Only hold one crystal at a time and feel the energy. And sometimes it'll feel warm and loving or it'll give you tingles or, you know, it'll just, it'll feel really, it'll give you some kind of an energy feeling in your arm. And it can actually go over your whole body. If the crystal really does that energy. Oh, Can you explain to people what that what that energy is? What is the what is the meaning of it? Well, everything is energy. So mm-hmm. it's just energy. These since they're from the earth, it holds a lot of earth energy, a lot of the um grounding energy. But energy as a whole always comes from source. So when you're feeling energy, whether it's in a tree, in a seashell, um from something up in the heavens and it's coming down like as in Reiki when you're an energy worker. It's all the same energy. It's just felt from different areas. And so that energy that you're feeling is the energy that is inside of that stone. The stone is holding it. And that's what you feel. 
how do you incorporate that into your healing practice? Mm, it depends on what the stone is that you're feeling. So say you took a clear crystal quartz and um, that stone is just really vibrating. You can feel it. It's kind of tingly in your hands. And you once you get that, though, you've got to be sure that you clear the stone of any negative energies. And that's kind of what we talk about in the classes. Um, that first class goes through all of these things. It talks to you about how to pick them out, how to feel that energy, how to do that cleansing and clearing, how to energize that crystal. And then once you go through all of these things with it and you've made this crystal pretty much yours um, and your energy is in it now, whatever the can, the problem is or uh, issue that your client is having, you can work with putting the crystals around the body. You can set the crystals on the body. I use a lot of the crystals for the different chakras to help clear them and to open them and energize them. Um, I always put a clear quartz crystal at the top of the head, laying there, pointing down through the body to give it energy. And what this does, when you use a clear quartz crystal, it uh, it magnifies the properties of all the other crystals. So it's kind of an energizer mm-hmm. crystal, but it's also a clearing crystal. So it will help go through the body. It will energize and give more power to the crystals that you're using on the body. And um, it also helps clear, so it takes away negativity. So it acts like a beautiful filter and a magnifier. Uh, is, and I know that each, and you know, ladies and gentlemen, crystals have been used They're used today in technology for very sophisticated medical devices and other devices. They've been used in radios, clocks, watches for years and years and years and years and years. So they have been around in in use in healing, uh, in shamanic practices, in uh, various um, Reiki and other healing practices, but they're also used to help us know what time it is to listen to a program to get a diagnostic uh, image to help us as it's used as a diagnostic tool. And for those of us energy workers and light workers that like to do our hands-on healing work, these beautiful stones that choose you or that you choose with care can be placed around or on someone to help cor- correlate and coordinate specific healing energies. Like when he's saying it can act as a filter as well as an amplifier. And as Wendy's going to continue to tell us about the crystals, you know, each kind of crystal has its own specific energy and are used in different areas of the body and also for different types of problems. And uh, so they have endless, endless numbers of uses. Um, you know, Wendy, I remember once I, I, it was kind of a combination of working at a job that made me really anxious, but I had picked up a beautiful pink quartz crystal and carried it around with me everywhere. Every time I was working, it was always in my pocket. And anytime I felt anxious, uh, out of sorts, I would just hold on to that crystal and it just helped ground me again. And I felt like I needed about 300 more of them <laughs> to really do the job <laughs> appropriately. And I don't even know if that was the right stone, but it really helped just calm me down and like, okay, you can get through this. You can get through the rest of the day. Um, but it, it was a source of comfort, but as well as keeping me grounded. But I know going into oh, a yes. crystal store, they're uh, you can just become overwhelmed by all of the beauty and all of the choices and actually all of the energy sometimes gets to be overwhelming as it comes off of those crystals. And you're like, oh, my gosh, I don't know where to start. So yeah, and sometimes what, if you're real sen- sensitive, you go into these crystal stores and um, sometimes you actually have to walk outside to take a breath because it can get really overwhelming. But I usually end up spending about two to three hours when I go to a crystal store. Uh, you need to have that time to, to look and choose and feel which ones are right to take home. And I know you probably love the energy that they oh, give yeah. too. <laughs> I'm sure. Yep. It's, a, it's a really nice energy. 
Uh, I'm going to take a caller. So, Wendy, just stay with me for a moment here and let me take a caller. And then we are going to come back and talk about um, some more about healing with crystals and how to clear them and some of the top 10 crystals you feel that you should have with you and why and some more things. So let's see. Let's take a call from area code 412. Uh, good morning. Who is this, please, and where are you calling from? Good morning. Hi. Hi. This is Shay. Thanks for having me this morning. Good morning, Shay. How are you? I'm okay, and how are you ladies? Wonderful. Glad Do you have a question know. for Wendy or for me or for both? Um, uh, for both, whoever feels, you know, <laughs> best to answer or who would like to. Yes, my question this morning is if um, you can pick up anything for me as far as a residential move, residential change. Right. Well, let me take a look at that, Shay. Thank you. And I'm I'm going to use the Archangel Tarot deck here, my Angel Tarot okay. deck, my big beautiful deck here. I'm going to ask God to surround us with love, light, wisdom, guidance, and support, with all of the protection and guidance and insight from all of the angels, and especially Shay's angels. Shay, I would also write, like you right now to ask your angels to help you. Alrighty. And I ask, what does she need to know for her highest and greatest good about a move? Are you, cons- are you in the East Coast or looking at going to the East Coast? I'm in the East Coast. I'm in Pennsylvania. Okay. Are you looking at going further East? Yes, preferably I like to leave this area altogether. Well, this beautiful angel is actually facing west. Okay. But she is let's see, she's just pull one more card. Okay, there we go. So the message here is and they're looking toward she's definitely looking towards the west. But she's reminding you, you know, you've got a lot going on right now. So you kind of need to slow down. You need to get your ducks in a row. And it it feels like things are very overwhelming right now. So um, first of all, just slow down um, and take your time when you're making this decision. But also do it from a standpoint of positivity. Try to do it from a standpoint of what – asking your angels to send you in the direction that's going to be for your highest and greatest good, but allowing you to see what is going to be for your highest and greatest good. So you're, you're looking kind of off in all different directions, but it feels like everything is very overwhelming and you just don't know which way to go. So first get everything lined up appropriately so that you're not focused on things that aren't going to things that are murking up the waters, mudding up the waters right now. You got a lot going on. So focus on one thing at a time, but do so from a from an aspect and a vision of joy. They're also saying your fears regarding uh money and self you know, employment is certainly uncertain. Uh, in your mind, so those are things on the back of your uh, in the back of your head. So, reaching out and asking for help from others is advisable as well. And networking. So, there's somebody that you know that can help guide you to new employment, new area, new friends, the things that you're supposed to be, the things that you're supposed to be thriving and doing in. And they're showing me these beautiful. Um, it's a very green area, many trees, a lot of nature, oh, pine trees are significant in both of these cards, and which is something that is unusual. Um, okay. It's almost, it's almost like it's the Pacific Northwest. Okay. Is the 
not so quite it, that far, but getting very close to that area. So, out of have you been that, looking out in that area? Many. Excuse me, hon. Have you been looking out in that area? Where have you been looking? Um, I haven't went into detail booking um, just yet, due to a another personal situation that I'm afraid would um, keep me where I'm at. Okay, it's a situation. Yeah, with my oldest son. I'm not sure if his father would put a stop into that. Oh, okay. But which I feel would be a move that would be most beneficial to my son as well. Definitely not as a selfish move. It's no. something for him involved. It's a beautiful environment. It's very peaceful. There's a lot of light, lightness there. There's a lot of light energy and tranquility okay. and peace and opportunities. She's definitely facing towards the west, however. And okay. it's beautiful. So please just kind of focus, you know, stay more narrow-minded rather than let everything jumble on top of you at once. So one thing at a time, one day at a time. Ask the angels to help you and then ask them to help you understand what they're actually saying and, and suggesting to you to right. tell them to make it very clear. So they're saying, you know, let's do this with a, with an attitude of joy and positivity rather than fear. And things will start to manifest much easier that way. And okay. they are actually... I think it's going to be easier than you think is what they're saying. Okay. I hope so. God willing. All right. Good luck to you. Let us know. I will do. Thank Thank you for for taking me this morning. Thanks for calling, Shay. Thank you. All right. So, Wendy, when... when we are talking about the variety of crystals that are out there, you know, you talked about how to pick out a crystal. How do you clear them and, and clean them and store them? Can you give us a, a brief idea of what how to take care of them so that they can continue <laughs> to take care of us? Okay, so uh, when you first get your crystal and you find that perfect piece that you want to bring home with you, um, it depends, again, that, that there's always some kind of a caveat to it. So, I mean, most of the crystals, you can use salt water to wash them with. You can set them out in the sun. Um, but there's some crystals that cannot go underwater, like selenite is one that will actually destroy your crystal. So you've got to be careful which ones you can do certain clearings with. If you want to be safe, you can actually take a slab and you can buy a little circle or a square piece of selenite and you can set your crystals on top of it and let them set there for 24 hours or so and that will help transmute all negative energies off of it. Um, You can spray it with a sage mist. You can uh, sage around them or use Palo Santo. Some you can soak into uh, the salt water and all of these will help clear your crystal. Uh, Sometimes when you get a piece of jewelry, it has a really hot feeling to it or it feels real heavy. These pieces, that and there's usually some kind of stone, but your energy goes into metals also. So you can take something like that and actually bury it in the ground and you keep it there for about a week. And if it has a lot of uh, extra energy that's on it that you don't want to be dealing with, you can leave it in there. Just be sure you mark it because sometimes you lose where you, where you buried your piece of jewelry or where you buried your crystal at to help get rid of any negativity. But once you got that part of it taken care of and it's all cleared, you can go ahead and set your crystal out the night before and the night of a full moon. Um, if you have no place to set it outside where it touches the earth, you want it to touch the earth. You don't want it setting on something that's not... Um, natural. Uh, you can also set it in your windowsill and put it on a piece of wood and set it in a windowsill where the, the light of the moon comes through. And that will help charge that crystal with clear, pure energy. And then once that's done, you're ready to start working with it. Okay, so we've we've picked it out or it has picked us out. We've cleared it, we've cleansed it, and now we're going to start working with it. So what are 
some of the things that people can use crystals for on a daily basis. Oh, my gosh. Well, I don't even know where to start. There's a lot of options here. But you had brought up the pink quartz crystal earlier, Mm -hmm. so let's go with that one first. This is um, a crystal full of love. It's very warm. It's very soft. It's just a very gentle feeling. So those people that are out there looking to bring some kind of love into their life, you hold your crystal and put intent into the crystal that you want it to help bring you whatever it is that you're desiring. Do you want a new relationship with someone? Do you want to bring love in with your family? Is there a certain situation that you want to have a more loving outlook to? And this is programming your crystal. And you just sit in a meditative state, hold it, send this energy into the crystal for what you're desiring. In this case, we're going to say we're looking for a a new love interest in your life. So you put that in there. You can put in what it, what that person will look like, all of the information you want, and you just take that crystal then, and you can put it next to the side of your bed on the bed stand. And so this is where you are going to, when you're sleeping, um, this crystal is working. It's magic for you. You can also set it in the love area of your home. So if you're going by the home method, if you're looking at your house, your love center is in the back right corner of the home. So this is where you'd want to set that pink quartz to bring that kind of love. Um, If you want to just bring loving feelings into your home and say you want to set it in the living room, but this is where, you know, most of the people gather and meet and this helps with having loving relationships with all the people that have come into your, to your home. So you can use it that way. Another crystal that's really great is the citrine crystal. Citrine is a prosperity crystal. And you want to use citrine. Well, first let me back up just a second because it's very hard to find a really good piece of citrine that um, that's very expensive and they're kind of hard to find. And uh, so most of the time what you're going to end up finding is an amethyst crystal that has been baked. So it's going to look kind of yellowy brown, oh. but it still kind of does the same thing because not everybody can afford a piece of citrine to to set around. So you can still put that same intention in. You want this crystal to help bring you prosperity. So you can set the crystal after you've put your intention into it. You can set it into that area of your home for wealth in the Feng Shui method, which I believe would be your left back corner of the home. So whatever room is back there, you can set your citrine in there. You can put your citrine on top of your schedule book. So if you're a practitioner or you do nails or anything where you're putting appointments down in and you're trying to bring that prosperity to you, you can set that the citrine crystal on top of the book and that will help draw more clients to your business. Um, That's beautiful so we can all use that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we had learned about the Reiki box, right? The Reiki box where you're putting in your intentions that you're trying to bring energy to it. You want to help manifest for yourself or even for others if you're trying to help them with their stuff. You can put that citrine crystal on there with the intention to help bringing clients to your friend. So it works in a lot of different ways. What What about a stone for healing? So if a person is ill or injured, in pain, what kind of stones and crystals can they use to help with healing? Oh, there's a lot. Uh, Every crystal usually has some form of healing that goes with it. And it will, you know, this is one that gets really complicated because Just the same thing as with food and herbs, one crystal can do many things. So you kind of have to really um, pay attention to what it is you're trying to create for yourself or trying to help 
uh, take care of within the body. So let's say somebody um, has an illness like cancer. What? And I have seen pouches with tiny little crystals in them that are sold at certain stores. And, you know, they say, well, use, use these stones to help with your illness, you know, with a cancer illness. What kind of, what kind of stones would you suggest for something like, you know, somebody that's got cancer? Um, sugar light is usually one of my first go-tos for someone that has any type of cancer. Uh, sugar okay. light is also ruled by Archangel Michael. And uh. it's a protection stone. It gets rid of negativity. It pulls things out. It's like, you know, Archangel Michael is a protector. He is the guy that comes in and, you know, takes care of all the stuff that's nasty and gets rid of it. And so that's why I'm really connected with uh, Sugar Light for that reason. And he comes in and, and starts doing his healing stuff. But, yeah, you just take that. You can set it by your bread. Again, you do the clearing. And if you're using crystals for healing aspects, I suggest that after you use it, if you sat it by your bed for a couple of days, take it and cleanse it again. Re-energize it. Put it on that selenite. That way you can always keep it fresh because a lot of times, you know, these things will start getting full of that negative energy. You want to release that out of there. And any time okay. that you use a healing crystal, always use a clear quartz with it because that magnifies anything that that other crystal is doing. Does that make sense? So it sounds like you should have two of each. So you can have one <laughs> in use all the time. And while one is clearing and recharging, you can use another one and have constant energy flow and exchange from that stone. Yeah, that was, you know, that's really a good point. You can definitely do that, but there's all sorts of things. So like here for an example, if you're having a problem with your eyes, there's a whole list of different kind of crystals that you can use. There's like aquamarine, uh, and the Christophaz, sapphire, the dark blue tourmaline, celestite, blue fluorite, fire agate. All of these, again, all of these can help with taking care of eye problems. And usually you would set them somewhere near your head or um, near your eyes. You can even put them on your eyes. Again, you need to be sure that you read up. If you're using crystals for healing, be sure that you understand what that crystal is going to do for you. Help put your intent into that crystal for that healing and then start working with it. And I think the importance of understanding what it does and how it works and putting your intention to it is also a very, it makes a very strong connection with your energies to that stone. And putting your energies and your intentions into that will only help empower it and help give you a sense of empowerment, knowing that you're taking an active role in helping yourself rather than just sitting back and hoping for the best, perhaps, now that you've taken an active role in making changes and you in being empowered, I think, is so healing in and of itself and helps repair energy leaks and, and anxieties. And, of course, if you're seriously ill, it's going to take an awful lot to help rebalance those energies but just being able to to make that a part of your own care and make that a part of your own intention I think is very powerful and sets and helps set a very strong intention. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, you're talking about like we were talking about rose quartz earlier where, you know, we're bringing this quartz in this beautiful pink quartz crystal in for love and, and healing of relationships. But it's also good for your heart, too. This helps strengthen your heart. Um, it also opens people up for more compassion, to be more compassionate towards others. 
So, yeah, there, and there's a lot that you can use, too. And this is why I like to use oils in, in my practice along with the crystals. The crystals can do so much to help the energies within the body. The oils help um, back all of that up. So if you want to have calming and peace, I like to use, um, shoot, hold on, I'm thinking of it. I'm thinking fluorite. And so fluorite for me has a real stabilizing effect. It keeps me calm. It keeps me even. And then I like to use lavender on my feet or just to inhale lavender because that helps stimulate my mind and makes it calm down. So it smells it. It calms it down. I've got my stone that helps me hold on to something that gives me that calming energy. And all of a sudden, I'm in a whole different place than I was five minutes ago. I love lavender. I sprinkle it on my pillows every night. And I'll tell you, (laughs) anybody that has insomnia or wakes up in the middle of the night and can't go back to sleep, get yourself a quality bottle of lavender essential oil and put a few drops on your pillow and you'll be out like a light. It's really amazing. Oh, It's really amazing. And uh, Mm -hmm. it sends a signal. I don't know exactly how it works, but um, boom, I'm out. Yeah, and if you put it, if you really have a hard time with lavender, you can stick it on the bottom of your feet. That's where the biggest pores in our body are located. So put a drop on the bottom of your feet before you go to bed, and this works absolutely fantastic for children. When you've got a child that's running around the house and you've just about had it with the, you know, the kid for the day because it's just they have so much energy. You know, if you put a little lavender on the bottom of their feet, it's all natural. Make sure that it's a quality essential oil, that it's pure. Don't be buying stuff that's over there at Walmart. But get a good quality one. And that child, the oils start taking effect within like 26 seconds. And they start to calm down and they will quietly go off and play. Instead of that frantic, crazy energy that's all around them, it helps bring them down and so that they can stay calm and that makes mama happy. Well, I'm sure that goes for adults, too. So when you get that crazy energy after a long, busy day at work, you can come and decompress. And when Wendy's talking about quality oils, you know, there are a lot of oils out there that use synthetic products. We don't want synthetic products. We want natural. We want the real deal. These are yeah. because that's where the healing properties and and the Anything that makes a difference is coming from the actual oil itself. So make sure that any oils you use are natural from the actual plant or herb and not synthetic. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. The, The synthetics disrupt our endocrine systems. They mess with our hormones. They cause us way more problems than we ever had any idea about. And, you know, nobody tells you this either. Anything that you're using in your house for cleaning supplies, any of that stuff all causes an issue because they're taking something that was natural from the earth and they've now tried to go and duplicate that as a synthetic. So it smells exactly like the product is that you can smell in nature. The problem is that the body doesn't recognize it, and that's what causes the problem. <sighs> yeah. So when um, so tell me, we're always in front of electronics. We are always in front of mm-hmm. phones computers, all kinds of devices all the time. How can we protect ourselves or clear that electronic energy that in the wireless energy? How can we clear? Because that gets, I think it makes people irritable after a while. And maybe they don't realize it or realize that that's the source. But I know sometimes it's like, oh, gosh, I just have to get away from this and go breathe. And so what sort of crystals? can be used to help clear that and protect yourself from all of that electronic energy and Wi-Fi energy. So there's a couple of them. The best one that I've got that I use right now is black tourmaline. Black tourmaline is a great protection stone. And you want to be sure that you place this. If you're working at computers, which I'm in front of all day long, 
So you want to place your black tourmaline between you and the computer and the monitors. So I set mine on top of my keyboard. Now, if you're working directly off of your laptop, just set it on top of your uh, where you're working at on the keyboard. Just set it straight on there. It's just put a piece on there that helps shield you. You can wear it as a necklace. This is great because that way you're shielded all the time. Um, a man had come to me and he said, well, I really want some shielding in my car. I've got all this stuff going on in the car, so I'm getting bombarded by electronics all all the time I'm in there. And it's like you take some and put it in your dash, not on the dashboard, but in that console area, just set a piece of black tourmaline in there. Uh, you can actually go out and buy discs uh, that you can put on your phone that has black tourmaline in it. The other one that I use a lot is Shungite. Shungite is great for EMS also. And again, remember that if you're putting clear quartz with it, and you can put copper too. Copper is also a magnifier and will make the stone a lot more uh, powerful. So keep the two stones together. Keep the copper with your Shungite or with your black tourmaline. And that really helps cut down on what's coming at you all the time. Shungite also is a clearing stone for water. This stone, I hadn't heard of it uh, a couple of years ago. I started looking into it. I heard about it. I thought, wow, this is really amazing. Look it up. Google Shungite, S-H-U-N-G-I-T-E. Just Google it. It comes out of a huge lake in Russia. And I guess this lake, it, you know, all the stuff, the water there is very polluted. But this lake, you can literally take water straight out of it, and it comes out clear. You can take shungite, and you can put it uh, in around your water area, and you can go ahead, and it will help clear and purify the water. So there's two, kind of two thoughts out there. One says that the shungite, can be toxic because it can let loose some of the parts of the stone. But I found that the polished stones don't seem to have that kind of an issue. I've also seen that with the black tourmaline. The ones that are not polished tend to leave a a residue on you, which um, I don't think in these cases that it is a toxic uh, issue. There are a couple of stones out there that will cause a problem, but there's not very many. So those are something to look forward to uh, being able to use. Another thing, when you're out around people, say you're going to a place that's going to have a lot of people, there is a lot of energy, good and bad in those situations. So in order to protect yourself, I always carry a piece of shungite in my left pocket or I put a shungite bracelet on my left hand. Uh, That way, since the left side, again, is the receiving side, That way, anything that's coming to me, when it hits that shungite, it stops. It really can't affect me, and it kind of takes and covers my whole body because it's covering the area where you would usually take in any kind of energies, good and bad. So that's helpful. So that's that's really good advice because, you know, there's so much coming at us constantly out there, and so many people are off off of... um, I don't mean to stay off balance in a mental way, but but he energetically off balance these days. So that's very helpful to know that there's ways we can protect ourselves just when we go to the store. What do you feel are the most important crystals besides the tourmaline and the shungite um, and the rose quartz? What other crystals do you think are important to have and why? Ooh, okay, so we've talked about a few of them, um, rose, quartz, the fluorite, the citrine. Amethyst is a very good stone to have. I think most I people recognize amethyst. it. Know what, oh, I know, <laughs> purple, I mean, come on. Um, I know. But everybody knows, everybody knows what amethyst is. It's, it's just pretty much one of those stones that everybody recognizes. But it's a very powerful stone, and it's a very protective stone also. Again, another good piece of jewelry to have on you to help protect you. Um, It's also great for your mind because it helps calm it down, and it can stimulate it too. Again, this is one of those stones that have a lot of multi-purposes. It's depending, again, on the need of the person that has the stone. 
So if you're like in a frenzy and you've got to grab a hold of some of the purple amethyst, this should help calm you down. If you're feeling really lethargic and you really need a little oof, um, grab your amethyst and it should help stimulate you and bring that up. Another stone that I really like is aventurine. This is a beautiful green stone. It can also be used for prosperity. Um, again, they use have different things. So green being a heart chakra color, it can be good for the heart chakra. Uh, it, green for money, it could be good for prosperi- prosperity. Gosh, I can't say that word today. And it also can help us fuse uh, negative situations and turn them around. So if you are... Uh, in an ugly situation and you have your adventuring, just grab a hold of it, hold on to it. And it should help make the negativity start to dispense. I carry, I always have a piece of it right here at work when I'm on my computer, because when things get hot and crazy at work, I grab a hold of that and it tends to keep me out of the middle of the fray as it were. So it's a really nice stone. As far as healing, this stone is, it has an anti-inflammatory effect on you. And it can also help ease some of the skin conditions that people get. Who's so an archangel all... associated with that? Is that Raphael? Wow. I don't, that one I would have to look up. Um, you know, I there's, there's the archangels are associated with so many things. So they have yes, different they colors to do. And the stones and the oils and everything, they have specific ones that are attached to them. And one of these days, I am going to write out a full chart and help maybe keep my mind straight. Because, yeah, I would really like to know uh, the stones that Archangel Raphael are attached to and what else uh, Archangel Michael is attached to. Both of those are wonderful archangels that I love working with. And I'm sure that they are attached to a number of different of uh, the crystals. So, you oh, know, I'm sure I think they are. There's one other stone I'd like to talk about real quick, and that's the moonstone. Okay. Moonstone is, first of all, it's just a lovely energy that comes with the moonstone. It's feminine energy. It's associated with the moon. It's also associated with uh, new beginnings. So if you want to start a new project and you've got it all written up, have a moonstone on top of there with the intention that you want it to really give it a good foundation for new beginnings and getting started on this wonderful project. And it's also an intuition stone. Um, so it's something if you want to start working with your intuition, start working with the moonstone. That's a good place to start with to get that going. It opens you up to synchronicity so your life can flow better. It's also an emotional healing type stone and it calms stress. So the best way, and there's no 10 stones that everybody is going to have that are the same because it's different things work for different people. So basically my best suggestion when you're trying to get your crystal toolbox started is go out and find out the different stones that would resonate with you when you're out looking at them and you find one that will do clearing for you, one that brings love into your life, something for protection, something that allows your voice to be heard, that gives you that strength to speak, um, something that's calming, something that's energizing. So all these different things that you need within your life, start there. That is the best place to begin at, to make sure that you've got something that's going to cover all aspects and all areas of your life and start working with those and then expand. Excellent advice. Excellent advice, Wendy. I, oh, my gosh. Um, you know, if, any, if you've never been in a crystal store, there's literally thousands of things to choose from, shapes, colors, sizes, stones, and, and you could just run out with your hair on fire going, I have no idea what to do, what to get. Uh, and, and the important thing is, you know, let it have meaning to you. Let it, let it be part of making your life better by finding something that correlates with that. And Shay, if you're still listening, that moonstone would be a perfect crystal for you with the changes that you're looking to make in life. So find yourself a nice moonstone. They're so beautiful and they're so feminine. I know that mm-hmm. Archangel Haniel 
uh, that is the overseer of the moon, the moon energy, the, our feminine side, our intuition, and the beautiful moonstone. So soothing, so calming, so loving. That's beautiful advice, Wendy. So find the ones that help you with what you need most. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, that you know in the future you're you're going to change. Your needs are going to change. And the good news is that means you get to get more crystals. <laughs> um, Wendy, let me take a moment here, and I am going to take a caller. And then when we come back, I'd like you to let people know how to get in touch with you uh, so that they can reach out to you for distance healing, for information, and talk about what you do, uh, what you offer. So area code 202, hello, good morning, and how can I help you? Uh, yes, good morning. Um, I just wanted to find out what you saw for me. Just, okay, and what's your name? Uh, Claudette. Well, good morning, Claudette. Hello. Okay. Do you have something in particular that you're concerned about? Uh, can you hold or just in general? Second? Just in general. Okay. I'm seeing a very beautiful violet color around you right now. It is a color of healing. It's a color of spiritual insight and learning. It's very vibrant. Archangel Michael is coming in to remind you that um, as you come to make changes or ask for one second. Hello? Okay. All right. So um, it looks like our caller had to step away for a moment. Wendy, why don't you go ahead and tell us how people can get in touch with you? I have an uh, email address that if you'd like to contact me, it's Healthy Habits, the number four and the letter U. So it would be Healthy Habits for you at Q, and that's just the letter Q, dot com. Um, that's the best way to contact me. If you are interested in an, one of the crystal classes, if you want to learn more about essential oils, if you're interested in Reiki or would like a distance Reiki healing done, um, I'd be more than happy to chat with you and see what you're looking for, and we can go from there. And Wendy is really wonderful. She's very knowledgeable. She's very compassionate. And I love the fact, I wish you could see all of the information that she has put together for learning about crystals because she incorporates the scientific aspect, the geologic aspect of the stones as well as their healing properties. So I I just think that's brilliant. And she does this beautiful, amazing, incredible meditation where you literally go down into the center of the earth and are surrounded by um, the most amazing energy, crystal crystal and energy. It's really life-changing. Very, very healing and very loving. So what other, Wendy, what other things, um, so we've talked about healing, we've talked about choosing stones. What other advice would you have just for, Someone that says, well, you know, my life's going pretty good. I really don't have anything going on. But um, what can I use a crystal for in my daily life? What about salt lamps? What, what's your salt thought on are, salt lamps? I love them. <laughs> um, <laughs> you say that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, they give negative ions to the space, which helps that clearing and keeping things um, going well. There's other things. I mean, you have no idea. I started delving into more on the salt lamps. So I've got like four of them now, and I've got them in all areas of my house. I turn them on. One I keep on all the time, which is in the center of my home, to help keep that clearing and that energy flowing. Um for those people that really think everything's going great, get yourself a nice size clear quartz crystal and put it near your front door. That way 
anybody who comes in with anything that might be hanging out on them that's a little negative, that crystal will pull it into itself so it doesn't disrupt the harmony of your home. And uh, if you want to learn how to grow plants, you can put crystals into, your, into the soil and work with Archangel Ariel, and that will help your plants flourish. Or if you're starting a garden, those are all great things. And if you really want to get into learning more about what all these crystals do and what they look like, Judy Hall is an absolutely amazing person. Uh, she has put three different books out right now on the crystal. They're called the Crystal Bible, one, two, and three. Um, actually, the first one's just the Crystal Bible. But it gives you a lot of information that when I first started out, I used those exactly like that as my Bible. I went there to find out what the crystals were, what they did, how they could bring healing. Uh, it's just fantastic information there's so much information out there that you can learn from uh about all of this stuff and the energy and and the crystalline places and it tells you places to go i mean you learn about places you can actually mine your own crystals crystals out and i think it's uh is it tennessee or arkansas near this arkansas that's it it's the arkansas the state park, park. yeah uh-huh. One of oh, my yeah. dream tours, people can go and dig up diamonds and rubies and <laughs> just play in the dirt all day and then pull gemstones uh, out of it and chase whiz. I wouldn't mind that at all. I love yep. <laughs> what uh, a jackpot. On my bucket See, list. <laughs> mine too. You uh, know, and I think having and working with crystals is nice because it brings us back. It gets us away from technology. It gets us away from demands from other people. And it gets us back down to earth. It gets us back down where we can use our senses, our tactile senses, uh, and and just our, our visual senses, looking at the colors, the facets. There are so many wonderful things. And you know what? They're just, some of them are just beautiful they're just incredibly beautiful and having Mm -hmm. a beautiful stone like that in your presence is and watching the lights play off of it you know you just have to stand there and look at it and go oh it's so beautiful and what a nice place to be in your in your head and in your heart is uh surrounded by something that makes you so happy so once again ladies and gentlemen you can reach wendy shearer at healthy habits for you at q.com that's healthy habits the number four the letter u at q.com and i want to thank wendy reiki practitioner crystal maven diva uh for being <laughs> with us today <laughs> you really you've really brought to light a lot of wonderful information about crystals and how they can help us So thank you very, very much, Wendy. I really appreciate your time and your expertise and your knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, thank thank you for being with us. You're welcome. Thank you, Miss Tiffany Goldilocks Productions, my wonderful producer, who I think the world of, and I'm sending her a long-distance hug right now. And I'm sending all of you gratitude for being with me today and allowing yourself to be part of the information that we share to help heal and to help connect with angels. Next week, I am very pleased to bring you Ms. Melissa Parks, who is an extraordinary psychic and medium and lovely, lovely lady who has the most joyful spirit and heart, and she's got great giggles. So please join me next week and uh, be ready to call in and get some readings from her. She's really wonderful. So until then, I wish you all so many blessings. Remember to ask your angels to be part of your life. Thank them and be part of someone else's um, happiness by reminding them of the angels in their life. And in the meantime, you can reach me at Laura at angelsandhealinglight.com. Many blessings to one and all. See you next week.